Welcome in, everybody. It's 10 o'clock. It's actually 10.02. We're a little we're a little behind. Welcome into Tampa Church of the Nazarene, where we are focused on sharing the peace, hope, and love of Jesus with Tampa and beyond. Happy to have you in with us. We got a couple quick announcements. It is uh, Faith Promise Week, so we have a guest speaker. We're super excited about Dr. LeBron Fairbanks being here today. Uh, we were in a Sunday school with him, and he had a lot of good, uh, good stuff to share. Want to give you a couple of announcements, though, real quick. Uh, we have our annual church elections coming up on February 25th. That is very close, just a couple weeks from now. Um, so you'll want to be here. We're going to do that election on Sunday morning. If you've received a nomination, uh, please contact PR um, so that we can get you plugged in. Again, that's going to be on the 25th of this month, annual church elections. Next Sunday, real excited about this one. We have Alabaster Sunday next week. We are going to be raising uh, special funds for the Global Nazarene Church. We're going to be raising money uh, to build churches, build hospitals, build schools. So uh, that's what Alabaster Sunday is all about. That's going to be next week, so you'll want to be there for that. Uh, we are going to go into a time of offering. So if our ushers will come up this morning... Thank you, Lord, so much for this day. I thank you, God, for bringing everybody out here this morning. Thank you for Dr. Fairbanks and the word he's about to share with us today. Thank you for the awesome breakfast, for all of our volunteers, for everybody who makes things run smoothly every Sunday morning. I thank you for our worship team. I thank you for our ushers, God. I pray that you would bless our offering this morning. I pray, God, that you would fill us with a heart of praise as the worship team gets ready to lead us, that we would praise you, God, no matter what we're going through, Lord, no matter what we've been through this week, God, that we would praise you in the midst of the storm. We would praise you in the waiting. We would praise you in the morning. We would praise you in the evening, and we would praise you in the noontime, God. I pray that you would give us that heart of praise, Lord, that we would give you glory in everything we do today. Bless the gift and the giver. I thank you for all things in your precious name. Amen. And Aaliyah is going to come up to read our passage for the day. Would you stand for the reading of God's word this morning? Hear the word of the Lord from Psalm 25. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right, and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. All right, this is a new song for us. Uh, it's been around a long time, but uh, this is one of those we need you to put your hands together and kind of help us out just a little bit. Uh, this, this is in direct response to the scripture we just read. Listen. Oh, Lord, my God. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. 
have so much to give thanks and praise to God for, but the reality is the work is not done. We still have so much that God is calling us to do and to be in the world. It started a long time ago, but it's not finished yet. And so we continue to praise through our obedience day in and day out. So this next song is literally just a prayer for us. It says, Lord, send me. I want to be someone that you send into all the world to make a difference for your kingdom. I'm undone by your holiness. 
who's alive we continue to declare your goodness your faithfulness your loving generous exorbitant grace that you continue to extend to us we give you thanks we give you praise God even as we were singing these psalms this morning, recognizing the, the significant importance upon us answering the call to go. Father, forgive us for making excuses for not living sent into the world. We sacrifice the call for the sake of comfort. We sacrifice it because of fear. We, we sacrifice answering the call for very selfish reasons. And so, Father, I, I pray that you, you have heard us as we repent of our selfishness. As we step away from the fear that freezes us and keeps us from being obedient to your call beg your forgiveness. But we also beg for a renewed infilling of your Holy Spirit within us that, that provides us power and, and boldness and, and ability beyond our own to be the church outside of these walls. And so God, we, we ask this not simply because it's Faith Promise Sunday, but it's because, God, we recognize that there is a a great deal of work still to do to accomplish your mission in the world. And so today, God, I, I pray.
pray through your Holy Spirit's presence here in this place that you would remove all the barriers that we tend to put up in being obedient to your will and your way. That we would embrace this invitation that you are giving to us and to join you in what you're doing in the world. Acknowledging that that invitation begins with what we talked about last week, just coming and dying. May we die to ourselves today. But God, even so, you know that things weigh on our hearts and our minds. And I don't I don't think that these burdens for people that we love, the, the circumstances, the things that are going on in the world around us are bad things because these are the things that break your heart and we pray that you would break our hearts for what breaks yours. That we would be broken for the lost that are around us. That we would be broken for the people who are in need, the people who are hurting, the people that are suffering, the people that are struggling in so many different ways physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, so many different struggles in this world. But God, we know that as we lay these things at your feet, you are faithful. And you are able to do exceedingly more than we can ask or imagine by your power in and through us. So God, as we bear these burdens with you, Give us vivid reminders that you are there and, and you're carrying the heaviest part of it. Now, God, as, as we continue to worship through the hearing of your word, I pray that, once again, you would anoint Pastor LeBron as, as he brings to us what you have laid on his heart. Speak to us as we hear what it is that that is going on around the world. But God, give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying and the courage to be obedient. We love you, we praise you, we honor you, we adore you, we worship you. We welcome everyone here today, not only for being here every Sunday, but, but this special service we're going to have today. You're going to listen to what God is doing abroad, uh, not only with your prayers and support. We have today Pastor, our good friend, LeBron Fairbanks and his wife. We welcome you here today. They, were they are going to be our special speaker this morning. Pastor LeBron Fairbanks retired in 2007 from Mount Vernon Nazarene University after serving 18 years as university president. He's a graduate of Treveca Nazarene University, has graduate degrees from Skerritt College, Princeton Theological Seminary, and Nazarene Theological Seminary and pursued postdoctoral studies at Harvard University and Yale University. Prior to this move to Mount Vernon in 1989, Fairbanks served uh, as president of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary in Manila, the Philippines, and as academic dean for the European Nazarene College near Schaffhausen, Switzerland. He has also served on the faculty of Southern Nazarene University. Fairbanks is an international speaker and author and the modular course of study texts, leading the people of God. We are so privileged to have such a wonderful, accomplished servant of God here today to share with us what God has done in his life. 
Welcome, Pastor Fairbanks Simeon. Good morning, that, uh, thank you. Yeah. Good to be back with you. I've attended uh, church uh, periodically since 2016 uh, in the initial setting here. It was my delight for those of you new to the church here. I was my delight to serve as interim pastor about nine, so 11 months actually in 2016. And uh, I noticed some members, uh, I, there's some new faces in the uh, praise team. And there's some old faces. I don't mean old faces. I mean, pre- <laughs> and um, even a good man on the keyboard. Yeah, I remember some days gone by. So, uh, and to see um, friends from Mount Vernon being here. Wow, that's a surprise and a blessing. That's a thank you. Okay, thank you. Really is a delight to be here and to, to be a part of uh, this faith promise series. I'm talking about missions, it's a matter of not what will I say, but of, of, of just a variety of experiences. At our age, we have a lot of memories, <laughs> and I'll be 82 this year, so we have nothing but stories and, and memories, so it's not we couldn't uh, what to do, but which, and I thought, no, I'm going to focus back in on uh, Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary. Uh, we're, we spent uh, almost 11 years overseas in mission settings, and uh, good number of those years are in the Asia-Pacific region at the seminary. And I want to talk more uh, about that uh, seminary. So if I say next, uh, Keith, you're just uh, next. And um, yeah, Asia-Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary is really the first um, site I saw when I entered a campus uh, of uh, Asia-Pacific APNTS. In 1984, the gate was there. The little building behind it was the administration, the former administration building of Children's Gardens and uh, in need of a lot of repair and a lot of cottages because this was a children's garden, a Methodist church-owned uh, orphanage for children. And they were selling it and we were buying it, but really buying the beautiful property, but not a lot of buildings to be uh, used. And uh, I shared with the group at breakfast this morning how uh, in that f- overseas flight from Manila, I mean, from uh, state to the Philippines. No fast way to get to Manila, uh, actually. But long, and I picked, the group picked me up at midnight, took me some back road home to the missionary house near the seminary campus. And I was to speak the next morning in the opening of school convention in 1984, July of 84. But they took me some back roads and, and uh, such poverty that I had not seen before. And I kept saying to myself, did I make a mistake? Did I make a mistake? Have you, have you ever asked yourself that question? Yeah. Did I make a mistake? And God was gracious to me, and he's gracious to you when you ask those questions at your low times. Trust your best moments, not your worst moments, by the way. Trust your best moments. And um, uh, we then, um, I think uh, Ann and Stephen followed us, uh, followed me, and, and Stephen enrolled in an international school for missionary kids. It was, it was really close by our home. And so, uh, but when I moved, uh, drove into campus the next day. This was the entrance I saw. And uh, it's a beautiful in- entrance. Actually, it's still there to this day. Actually, the renovation of the building's taken place. A lot of new buildings, and I'll show those to you as you go. Next. I really wanted to, to say, to say uh, thank you to uh, the uh, seminary. Uh, and for what the seminary did to us and with us and for us and to us. But I want to say thank you to you. Are you aware that this local church and your giving to world missions really is giving to the support of schools like APNTS and other schools around the world? We have 51 similar schools, colleges, theological colleges, universities, uh, seminaries, uh, s- serving in over uh, 40 countries and 120 learning centers in those various countries. And you were a part of that. Why do I say you're a part of it? I th- I'm going to give you a stat that you may know or may not know. Are you aware 
that since 1926, Tampa First Church, now Tampa Community Church, has given a total of a million ninety-seven thousand two hundred and thirty-four dollars for the World Evangelism Fund. Can you believe that? I, I, I checked that in the research office in Kansas City this week. Over a million dollars in the world in the world mission event. So as you give, you may not go, but you can give so that others may go, like myself. And missionary salary is not a lot of stuff, but I could depend upon what I knew would, was committed to me for my time there. And uh, so I was so very grateful. And then uh, that million fifty-seven thousand dollars. It's not all. Are you aware that through mission specials like to Haiti and other your, your uh, projects, working witness projects, another five hundred and three thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars for mission specials for a total from this church for a million six hundred thousand five hundred fifty-eight dollars for world missions. Praise the Lord! Isn't that good? Amen. And I'm here. I'm here as a recipient of one of those, if you will, your gifting. You may not say, well, what, what are you giving? But it's a song, beautiful selection of songs this morning, Pastor. Beautiful selection of songs. Thank you. But some are called to go, and some are called to send those to go. And all are called. And uh, I want to say thank you. I've been a recipient of being sent there. And as Ann said earlier in the, in, the, in the class, we benefited, I think, far more than we contributed, and yet we did feel like we contributed. Several stats here about APNTS today. You know, our school was designed to be uh, a graduate school, theological school, for uh, not just the Church of Nazarene, but uh, pastoral and training for in like-minded school, uh, churches, but uh, to be a graduate level school to train Asians in Asia so they wouldn't have to go to Europe, they wouldn't have to go to the United States and be tempted to stay in those settings. But would receive their training at a quality level back in the setting, in the setting situation wherein they lived. Manila was chosen because it was a deeply urban setting. You'll see some of that urban setting right across the street from our entrance. This entrance, right across the street. Keep that entrance in mind a moment ago, and I'll uh, tell you why. But uh, 600 graduates of APNTS now serving literally around the world. Of course, in the Asia Pacific region, but also in Africa in South America and North America, around the world, in, in particularly in leadership roles or our schools, our districts, our pastorates, and, and organizations, nonprofit organizational settings. And then my delight to stay in touch with many of those and go back. And, and one of our delights now is to, to uh, actually go back and resource those students of ours and days gone by who are now in leadership roles. And if I can come alongside of them and support them and say, yes, you can do it. Here, there's a resource here, a resource there. If I can help them, I want to do that. We're doing that starting, what, eight days from now? We're going to Fiji Island. Uh, it's a long trip. <laughs> Pray for us. But uh, going in and being a week-long conference on leadership for their uh, pastors, their school students, their uh, lay leaders, and we look forward to it very much so. Former students involved there. This school now uh, offers courses from the baccalaureate level through the doctoral program. Next, please. Motto for APNTS, the scriptural context. I learned this so very quickly. I was uh, taken from uh, 1 Timothy 2.5. There's one God, one mediator between God and man, the person Christ Jesus. There's one God. And one mediator between God and man, the person Christ Jesus. I came, I came face to face with that passage, that, if you will, motto, that scriptural foundation for the school early on in my time in, uh, in Manila. And I was serving as president of the seminary. And I had asked myself, do I really believe this? 1987 it was. Ann and I were celebrating our, our um, 25th wedding anniversary. And uh, we were able to locate a uh, Alliance Church guest house in Bangkok. And we were able to take a fairly cheap German flight on the way to Germany, stopped in Bangkok from Manila. And we were able to get that flight, and we spent our 20th wedding anniversary in Bangkok. We'd never been in Bangkok. We'd heard about it. We were able to get to the Alliance Church guest house. And one of those several days we were there, we took a tour of Bangkok. And, and we had a tour host. And that tour host what would you say would be so evangelistically inclined for Buddhism? 
We saw more Buddhist temples. We saw more gold. We saw more aspects associated with Buddhism than we'd ever seen before. And I remember returning to our campus in Manila saying, do I really believe there's only one God and one mediator between God and man, the person Christ Jesus? About two months, no, two weeks after I returned to campus, I was scheduled to speak at the commencement service for our school in Indonesia, Indonesian as in Bible College, and in, in Jill Jakarta. Early in my first morning, four o'clock in the morning, I remember hearing those sounds of the Islamic temple very close, ringing out for calls to prayer, and they were frequent, and uh, they're jarring in my thoughts. And I remember returning to campus again and asking the question, do I believe? Do I really believe? There's only one God and one mediator between God and man, the person Christ Jesus. Later that fall, 1987, I was to represent the Church of Nazarene in India for several reasons that I was there. And part of the time I was there, my host uh, took me to an Indian burial site, which, which was following the traditional Hindu burials of burning people. I mean, literally in front of you and, and, and the sites so you could see it. It was shocking to me, but it was a part of their culture, part of their religious tradition. And I remember going back to campus, and I remember saying, do I really believe? Do I really believe? Do I really believe that there's only one God and one mediator between God and man, the person Christ Jesus? Or is God only one of several ways uh, that lead to a God? Is Jesus uh, one of numerous ways? That leads to God. That's okay. Is there only one God? Or is he the only way, truth, and life? And uh, on my knees in my office, I remember saying, Oh, Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. But help me, Lord. I believe that there is. this will be the foundation core of my life. It has to be if I'm, if I'm willing to sacrifice. And to this day, this is a core scripture for me. And, and I, it was in Manila. And coming onto that school and very quickly, and this is the core, this is the passion, this is their belief. There's only one God and one mediator between God and man, the person Christ Jesus. Next slide will tell us that uh, in this, the reason this is so important in that in the Asia Pacific region, we have over 2.6 billion people in the Asia Pacific region, the region this seminary serves. Uh, 2.6 billion, and of that Amount, 40, this is really representative of 40% of the world's population. And of that 40%, 50, uh, 50% of those individuals live in cities. Cities uh, of over uh, a million people. There are 135 cities uh, in that region with over a million people, uh, but uh, 108 cities with less than 3% Christian population. So if we believe there's only one God, one mediator between God and man, the person Christ Jesus, we have that sense of responsibility and the sense the need is urgent to effectively make Jesus known among the people uh, of, the, of the region. Well, let's go back to the seminary entrance. Right across, the next slide, right across from the uh, uh, entrance to the seminary uh, uh, is a uh, bustling uh, this was basically the way I saw it in 1989. This is a picture I took last year, except it wasn't three stores, just one store. What they do is build one level, and then when there's family, it is, it'll keep going up. That one has several family units now. Bill, EB, it, that's right across the street. Next slide, please. If you see them, this, it's uh, directly, directly across the street from that gate. Go ahead. And this is not 40, 50 years ago. This was last year. And so... How do you train uh, people to serve in effectively uh, in, the, in a setting where, from a missionary point of view, mo most of the missionaries come from outside the area to that area. How do you effectively train them to minister within the area and uh, embrace and not put down the setting and context in which they live and work? but do it with uh, a love and authority. Across the street from the seminary, I told you, was this next slide will show you. Uh, there was a, 
When I moved there, there was a little basketball court. <laughs> we had to tear down very quickly the uh, lean uh, part of the basketball uh, stage area. But we left the basketball court so that those students across the teams across the street could come over and play basketball, give them, a, give them an outlet. And they loved it. It'd be uh, sometimes so late at night. We'd go home a little earlier, but it's okay. It's okay. It's for family. It's for problem. And it's for challenge. They love being there. And uh, so uh, this is right across the street from the schools. Next slide. When I arrived on campus, uh, there was one building, really new building on campus, a lot of older cottages that were needing to be torn down or renovated, mostly torn down. But this was a building that had just been dedicated uh, just as the new school started. I told you uh, the school was uh, started in 19... 1983, November 1983, the first classes. I was elected first full-time president in the spring of the following year, so I was there right after. Then this building was dedicated. My office was the top of the steps to the right, and the second window set there. And uh, the uh, library was on the second floor, classrooms on the, on the left side. And uh, you'll see in a moment uh, the, uh, the, new, uh, uh, the new administration building. Next slide is a slide, uh, actually, and uh, not to show just Ann Stevens and me, but the person in the middle. This was actually, slide was taken um, at our uh, departure in 1989 when I had, uh, was leaving my assignment in the middle, in the middle accepted the assignment in Mount Vernon, Ohio. This, uh, I mention this because this lady in, in the middle was a student. She had graduated, she and her husband. She came to school, seminary, already with a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree. Her husband came to school with a civil engineer degree already. They both felt the call to preach and pastor, serve the Lord full time. And now they're missionaries in Papua New Guinea. They still are. They're still in church. They're in Papua New Guinea. Correspond with them periodically. Deep friends. We had a little sidecar as our one of our mode of transport, our mode of transportation. Uh, Motorcycle sidecar, and when we left the building, we gave it to them because they were pastoring church close by the seminary, and uh, they uh, they made it. They had several children by that time, and they just made it, so it was a family vehicle for them. But I wanted that's the quality of students that came and continue to come to APNDS uh, for their training and field call. Today, there's a new slide. There's a new administration building, and uh, built in 2000. Uh, uh, two, three, four, right through there. And uh, the next slide's a better picture of it from a, an angle. And uh, it has now the new chapel. It has administrative offices, classrooms. They rent out several buildings on top. But uh, the uh, seminary not only received our accreditation, as I told you, in 1988, uh, a recognition that permitted uh, our students to uh, receive student visas, students from outside the United States, to receive student visas when they came to study here. But it gave standing and status to our school, and, and uh, we had the academic quality of faculty, students, the library, so that uh, uh, numerous students from various denominations came. It's my joy, next slide please, to speak in the commencement service last, uh, last year when I was there. And uh, uh, the beautiful part in, in this is that the uh, uh, not only were there, there were students from the Philippines graduating, but various countries, various kinds of uh, uh, dignitaries from other entities were there speaking uh, glowingly of the seminary. But we also uh, saw a, a person we had met in 2013. Next slide, please. And this, is, this is so important. I wanted to end if you can. Maybe just stand right there. Can you? There, go ahead. We spent a semester on campus in 2013, and one of our Korean students started a little house church, probably five miles from the seminary, and we met in the small home of Jaron and his mother. And uh, shortly after that, Jaron, he was 15, he was painting and fell, and was paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, but he continued to serve in the, the little church with the Korean student. She graduated and moved on. And 
we lost contact with him. And when we were there, they had last year. Yeah, last May, they had graduation, but they also honor those who have done the classes to be ordained into the church. And he he came in in the wheelchair, and I thought, that's I think that's Jaron. It's been a long time. And I went up to him. I said, Jaron. He said, Yes. I said, Do you remember me? He said, Yes. He had finished the course of study and now is a pastor of that little church in his community. And I was just so excited. I made a picture to send to Mija. She's now teaching in England. And, uh, but it was, he had to come by public transportation and, his mu- and the pastor who was doing the classes said every, I think I don't, I probably monthly they do these classes, but his mother got him on public transportation and with his wheelchair and got him to the campus. And he completed the study, and we were just so proud of him rejoicing. And yeah. he was proud. Yeah, and he was very proud. <laughs> Thank you. I told you that the school started first class, November 1983. Next slide, please. You'll see that um, last year, the former presidents were there and the regional director. The person second from the right Dr. Floyd Cunningham retired in November of this past year, but he was one of the original faculty members. He was there, original faculty, November 1983, and stayed continuously as academic dean right through that time on various administrative assignments, mostly as academic dean, until his retirement in December of uh, last year. He's going to be here in Florida. He's on a year-long uh, year-end uh, 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 sabbat- not sabbatical, but deputation right and we'll be here in Florida next October. If you can get him, it would be wonderful. But he just wonder, he's the one who wrote the book, uh, A Watchword and Song, History of the Church of the Nazarene, written numerous histories of great historian, especially of, of Asian history, but also the Church of the Nazarene. Good friend. And uh, I wanted to, so that he's been the glue, the continuation. There have been several presidents along the way, but he's been that steady. And so... I'm hoping that you're seeing that when you, when I told you you gave money in the World Mission Giving, you're giving to this school, not the whole thing for sure, but you're a portion, and so you're a part. I hope that you're feeling a sense of pride. This is your church. This is your school. This is what you support, and you can't go, but you do support those who do go. Praise the Lord. The next slide shows you the uh, another one of the original buildings on campus. Next slide, please. Yeah, this was this was the chapel. This was the outdoor chapel on campus. Still is is the outdoor chapel, and uh, but I was inaugurated there. I had my first sermon there uh, in June, July, excuse July of 1984 in this chapel. I was uh, a part of, of a lot of special sort. We use it just for special events. I'll show you in a moment. Next. Uh, uh, there's, oh, no one's going to touch that. They may build new buildings, but you're not going to touch that outdoor job. Too many memories associated with before we bought the church, since we bought the build property in 83, and even to that, this day. Keep that in mind. There's a creek that runs right to the left. If you can't see it, I'll show you the creek in a few moments. But to the, I'm going to spend a little time talking about the creek and the creek community. Uh, just just uh, to the left of these bi- uh, uh, b- bushes, to the left of the, the outdoor chapel. Uh, Next uh, next uh, slide. Last year when I was there, in addition to speaking at the commencement service at seminary, I was asked to speak to uh, pastors, Metro Manoeuvre District pastors, and it was on the inside of this uh, uh, building, this outdoor chapel. Uh, I only put this in to show you the inside of the chapel, but see the guy here on the left? He is the uh, new district superintendent for the Fiji Island District. His wife was in a class of mine I taught online several years ago, a doctoral level class, and she uh, was from uh, from Fiji. Actually, there were 19 students in that class from 11 countries covering, covering, I think, 14 time zones. That's crazy. We had a wonderful time. But I remember when he introduced me and he told me where he was from, his last name, I remember the name, I remembered his wife, and she taught him a lot of the ministry uh, together on the Fiji district. But uh, after, uh, after the service, he was the first one to me, and he said, I want you to come to my district and share exactly what you've shared with us today. And I said, well, I take that as a compliment, but 
but thank you, but I need to talk to my wife. <laughs> I need to talk to the Lord. I need to talk to my doctor. Not necessarily, you know, you know almost in that order. But, uh, but I said, uh, thank you. I said, let's talk at General Assembly. You'll be there. And, uh, and we did. And we corresponded by Zoom every other uh, month or so since then. And we're ready. We are so ready. I'm pumped. I've been working hard to revise what I did in Manila, add to it. It's a week-long uh, series of conferences. And uh, that uh, outdoor chapel, we did, again, tear down a lot of the buildings. Next slide. Uh, through a part of your alabaster giving. You remember you give the alabaster offering? For those of you who have been around the church in Nazarene a long time, you know what alabaster offering? Part of your alabaster offering helped us build this new student residence facility. We had to remember we had to tear there were old cottages that that uh, we just really had to tear down. And uh, bottom floor men's residence, two floors of couples, married couples, top floor designed to be a, a ladies resident facility. And uh, and uh, likewise, the next slide is a picture of the newer building uh, for student building, student uh, dining commons, and like more of a student center. On the weekend, next slide. On the ne on the weekend uh, after the uh, commencement and after the uh, pastors day, the Metro Manila pastors, I uh, flew to uh, center part of the Philippines called called. Uh, uh, the Central Philippines Nazarene College. It used to be Bazaian Nazarene Bible College, strictly Na Bible College, and a number of years ago they enlarged it to be uh, the Central Philippines Nazarene College. But COVID hit, and, and it really almost killed the church, uh, killed the church school, killed the school, not quite. But one of my former students was asked to about two years ago to, to be the new president. This student was pastoring the largest church in the Philippines, Church of Nazarene, a very large church. And, you know, he had the amenities there, he had the car, he had the parsonage, he had a, he had a very good fellowship for that area. And uh, he talked to me about it. And I said, if you go, you need to make sure it's a calling. It's just not just going back to your home school. To, it's different. And he prayed about it. And probably not to my surprise, he accepted. So in his first year, he said, when I told him I was going to be back in the Philippines for speaking, he said, I want you to come. I said, if I'm going to come, let me do something for you. What can I do? He said, we don't have any money to do anything. We don't have money to get you here. I said, I'll get my way. I'll, 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 I'll get my way there. And uh, what can I do? He said, what, what would you suggest? I said, let's have a two-day leadership uh, summit, a forum, I think we call it, leadership forum. And um, let, let's, let's do that. And uh, a wonderful crowd. Next slide will show you uh, part of the students of that. What exciting, what was so very, 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 very exciting for me is that a number of these students here uh, in, in this picture are now pastoring or leading other organizations, pastoring churches of the Nazarene in that central Zion area. And they came back this two days and uh, then former uh, other pastors, district leaders, also students, uh, day students there to come in. And uh, I want to tell you, what a blessing, what a blessing to pass on. Because in our retirement, what we do is, is, is that all we can do basically is to pass on to others what has been passed to us so generously, right? And, and, then, and so part of my passion, even going to, into Fiji, but going here was, was, to, was to pass on to a younger generation of leaders, emerging leaders, if you will, what has been so bountifully passed to me through education, through experiences, through training, through relationships, through opportunities. And if I can do that to others, sure. And some of you in this church, without me asking, you heard how we were going and, and, uh, and uh, provided some support. I said, it will not be for me. I'll find a project there. The next slide will show you a, a, uh, a picture. This is a printer. Well, I got there, and, and I realized they were really at rock bottom. You know, you, you probably know and been in a situation where you feel like you're at rock bottom. They were rock bottom. And... When I found out that the, the only printer on campus was in the president's office and the academic dean, the registrar, all needed to use that printer far more than the president, but it was in the president's office, they only had one printer. So I took some money that some of you actually gave to us to work, to give to a project. And this little printer, it, we were off this printer. That looks like small. It's not small. This is the way I angled it. But they were so thrilled. They, they probably need several more. But the truth is now they have two. And uh, 
here so excited uh, been about the new school year, the attendance, and all that's going on. Praise the Lord. Oh, back to AP and DS. Next, next slide. I told you about the academic standing uh, and the quality of education, and uh, from the from that that enabled through the experiences and through the academic training to be teachers at our schools in Asia, uh, be district leaders in Asia and beyond, but particularly in Asia. Here is a couple of he's the academic dean, Dr. Ackerman, a great New Testament scholar, written a number of books in New Testament studies by the Nazarene Boundary Press. But uh, academic dean is a quality of teaching. And again, he's on missionary. He's a missionary salary. He doesn't have a float a great salary. He's on missionary salary, which is minimum. I was going to say minimum wage is for low minimum. <laughs> minimum wage. Hey. I know. Uh, been there. Another slide shows another Old Testament prof. Next slide. Here's Dr. Modine. Brilliant. You know, Doc? Yeah. Brilliant Old Testament scholar. He's there. I was part of, that's uh, a long story, of helping him get there 10 or so years ago. He's single. Ah, we knew a single Filipina <laughs> that was working. And from the beginning, we had it worked out so that the single missionary coming in Old Testament would meet the single Filipina who's working in the office. And they did. Oh, and she makes the great, she makes the most wonderful lasagna Chicken enchilada. Every time we go, about every two or three years, we have this dish. It's a standard dish at the house. Chicken. I mention that only to say uh, these are uh, the quality staff. And so when you give, you, you're also giving to, to, some, to support missionary salary. And, and our church has been overall has had to reduce its missionary salary. But praise the Lord, our church has been leadership has had that wisdom to, to keep in place at this strategic location in Manila, this regional school, equipping leaders, emerging leaders, who can be then other leaders throughout various parts of the school in, in, the, uh, uh, in the church of the Nazarene. Praise the Lord. The next slide, and Anne, I think I'll just go through the next slide uh, because of our time. The next slide, uh, HR director, uh, uh, this, this is an Indian couple graduate, uh, they were students in 2017, when we were back in uh, 20, uh, last year, we were way back last year, uh, they were in their home, graduate, he's now in a doctoral program, uh, the, they're great, he, they're both from India, they were single, and went back to India, married, and came back to seminary for doctoral studies, now they're in a student apartment, uh, little child, he pastors a church just on the outside, of the back gate of the seminary, Next slide. And uh, uh, that's important because I always, and you have to tell the story of, of Connie. Uh, in 2017, we were there for the full semester, and I would go down to the corner and buy veggies, and I went to the same lady every day, every day, every other day, and developed a friendship with her. And then I asked if she would like to go to church with me. And when I was there earlier, she wasn't interested. And I, we, we went out to eat there, but she was all dressed up. We went out to eat. McDonald's. And, then, and McDonald's. went to McDonald's with her. Close by. But um, before, we, when she went to church with me, before we left, I took a pastor's wife close by on the campus, another friend, and another, the couple, the Indian couple who live on campus and they, with their church right behind the next Sunday, she has been there every Sunday Since then. and is very involved, and she was able to buy a little iPad, and she, we can communicate, and she sends me pictures. She's singing solo. She's working singing. with the children, and she's taking children from her community to the church, and so for us, that is just so very exciting. Well, her thank name you. is Connie. Connie. The next several slides, key for just uh, children when we were... Uh, Growing up, there's just three sisters on the left. Now we see them in leaders on, on the seminary and the region, and uh, it's a wonderful family. Next slide. Uh, this young man uh, standing was a little tyke when we were there. We knew his mother was very close to us. She still is very close to him. Now he's married and very involved with the church, actually the church on campus. What was so delightful to see them involved in the church now. But the next slide will show you the next generation of their little son. Playing the drums, boy, he was uh, he was really drumming, drumming. It was really, really 
uh, powerful there in the uh, uh, playing, uh, playing the drums. We, we enjoyed that. Well, the mode of transportation, uh, you probably the next slide is uh, what is called the jeepney. You take life into your own hands. But now this is a side road. This is not where, this is great, but not all roads are mirror. Not many roads are mirror. Are this road less traveled. <laughs> this, this is a, but the jeepney you take. Notice his, he has a little, uh, my friend has a little uh, shocked look on his face. He just came through that great heavy traffic area. But you, with cars and jeepneys and jeep, uh, these are tricycles. That's, we had a tricycle like this and gave it to uh, Carol and, and Brandino when we left them. Alone. But uh, mode of transportation. Let's go back to the next slide. That little creek. And I'm going to go through this real quick because uh, of time. And I, will let you I told you this creek is right. Remember the outdoor chapel here on the right now? You see part of it there. This creek, if you follow that creek just beyond the corner there, our seminary property ends, and what is called Rowena's Community begins. And our seminary and our community, very impoverished area, we'll show you in a moment, have had a wonderful relationship. In fact, a number of years ago, the big typhoon came through Manila. Everything flooded. This creek went over the banks. Our seminary was closed for two, two weeks, but not just because of our... our we have, they could, our seminary students could get to higher ground on campus. We in this community could not. So they came. They, they post, they stayed in the uh, campus outdoor chapel. They rested there. We have provided some food for them. But since that time, uh, prior to 2013, 2012 or so, that happened. But uh, we've had that special relationship. I wanted to go. I knew in 2013 we went, and there's a new church in Madison. We started by one of our former students there at the school. And I wanted to make sure that uh, uh, that uh, uh, church was still in existence. Well, I, I asked the, uh, the head, the lead pastor. He said, I'll have the preaching pastor take you there. So he met us. And next slide, we went outside the seminary up uh, into the formal walkway. That's the formal driveway, walkway into from the main road down to the community, to the creek where these creeks are. And this... Uh, let me just go through the next slide. This, as we were going to see the church, we had to pass by this little basketball court. The next slide will show you uh, that little blue in the middle of the road, little middle of the slide, the uh, tarp area, the little red building. The little walkway leads over to a church building. Next slide will show you the the uh, uh, building where the church. We found there's a second floor being built and looked out. There's the creek. Now that creek is just right around the corner. It's up the seminary campus, the outdoor chapel. But uh, even the next slide, see, the next slide, that's not 40, 50 years ago. That was last year. And not just there, different places you wonder how in the world they have approval to do that. Even, but we, these, these are pictures I taught, uh, I took. Up, I didn't take these pictures. Next slide, didn't take these. Uh, next slide, Keith. Yeah, that's, again, that was last year. But how do we. How do we work with them? And this, this, we started a church, actually in cooperation with the Korean Church of Nazarene, and APNTS was sponsoring a little gathering. We started 2013 to build a first level church, and now they built a second floor. And this pastor was so excited. Next slide <coughs> to uh, show us. Now this was incomplete, uh, and uh, uh, but the pastor was so excited. There's an alabaster. You can't see it up there, right in the middle under the cross. There, that's an alabaster box. But the building didn't, didn't have a floor to it, a solid floor, uh, just a concrete floor, no windows, no screen. And probably the second floor outside that screen, there's a creek on the other side. And, and I said, how can we help you? And he said, oh, I just need windows. And I, and I was sharing some of these pictures, not, not this presentation, I was sharing some of these pictures with our own Sunday school class when we returned in Lakeland. And went spontaneously, said, why don't we help them with the windows? And I said, if that's your choice, I'm not here. To, I'm not sharing it for that reason necessarily, but I'm for it. A couple of weeks, I think two thousand dollars were pledged for this, and the, they were so so very excited. They uh, started uh, showing us pictures, and they said they, they had pictures with with screens and windows and flooring and and lights and fans and all all sorts. And they were thrilled. They said, and I, I think I have a, a letter of gratitude in a moment. But uh, what I like, next slide, what I like about this church, though, from the very beginning, next slide, next slide, next slide. 
that's a, that's the new floor. <laughs> uh, they, and he said, give gratitude to God for the comfort that the linoleum brings. It's pleasant to look and fairly easy to clean. We think, why, the carpet is difficult at times. Praise the Lord for carpet, <laughs> they would say. <laughs> Next slide. He's saying, you know, the, the gratitude you ha we have for your compassion is immeasurable. It's not my. I shared with my Sunday school class, and the Sunday class responded, praise the Lord. And it was a wonderful gathering. And um, next slide. They have this church just, uh, these were tithing envelopes. We call them tithing envelopes. Their names on it, the people that come. And they're given this little envelope. And from the measure of what they've received, they give back. They're taught tithing from the beginning. Next slide shows self-help projects. And uh, the, uh, uh, these are little, God, what do you call them, man? Christmas, Christmas ornaments. It, after school, and now they've converted the lower level, this, this church next to campus, they've converted the, the uh, lower level into kind of a study, after school study area for children, a work area for work projects, for selling items, uh, so they can have some sense of income. And uh, uh, next slide. Uh, you see these kinds of uh, quotes all around, not poverty, not thinking how poor we are, uh, thankful for who they are, and the need for gratitude. Next slide. Uh, this is that first floor where children uh, can study and, and, and they work on these projects together. Next slide. We, as we were leaving and going back to the uh, 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 area of uh, the campus, going back out of this, then to the campus, we passed these girls, and they were working with little doll houses. Next slide shows you how they were making dolls. Can you see? That, they, that's little paper. See the cardboard? I said earlier, they can make something out of nothing. They don't have money for doll houses. They make doll houses out of cardboard. See the TV they made? Not a real TV, but in their minds, it's a real TV. It's a dollhouse. And I'm just overwhelmed. And our church is pouring themselves into this group. Now there are about 5,000 people in this rural English community living on both sides of the creek. And we have a church right in the middle. When I say in the middle, we had to walk down, remember, to that middle area. It's a great church on two floors. What a, what a great response. Well, we need to keep going. I think we probably come in for a landing here. We need to keep going. Let's... Uh, Let's keep going. Next slide. The lead pastors overwhelmed, really committed to helping their, their congregation and their children and youth especially develop self-help projects. And there's a variety of self-help projects. It's not waiting, showing how to ask for money, but providing some income for them. There are various ways of doing that. Next slide. Next slide. It was in the Philippines that really I heard this song, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. And I think we're going to close with this song in a few minute, moments. But it was not here in the States. It was there in the Philippines. In, a, in that kind of context, a grateful heart. Give thanks with their heart. Give thanks for what the Lord has done. Uh, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the, poor, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, we give thanks. What a beautiful song. And I heard that. There. I learned that from them. And I'm so very grateful for that. Next slide. So... I want to thank you, and I close with this. I want to thank you for your continued support for the global mission of the church through the Faith Promise Commitment Council. And this is from Research Center this last week. From 1926 to 2023, Tampa Community has given $1,097,234 for World Evangelism Fund and $503,324 for mission projects for a total of one million six hundred thousand five hundred fifty eight dollars praise the lord and so thank you for your prayers and support for missionaries and ministerial training for the asia pacific region thank you for your prayers for us as we travel next week to the fiji islands for Biko and leadership conference and i close this slide next slide and i'll leave it at that reminding you of why we continue to give and to work and to go to the asia pacific region Thanks for giving me even extra time. Thank you.
our vocalists and our instrumentalists would come. Um, thank you, Pastor LeBron. Uh, we said it before, we can say it over and over again. The work's not finished. There's still much to be done. And we get to be a part of it. But we, give, we continue to give thanks to God for what he has done, knowing that he's not done. And there's still much that he wants to do in and through us. So I'm going to invite you to stand with us for just a moment. It's a familiar song. might sound a little bit different. Uh, but uh, this, is a, this is a song that's been out there for a long, long time. So listen, follow along, let's sing.
purpose of this card is for you to take a few minutes and give some thought of how you want to help for this work all over the world to go on. Whatever God put upon your heart, you can feel free to do so. Faith promise, because you can do more. We can do more working together than we can alone. Every person shares a portion of income to make Christ-like disciples in the nation for your life. Uh, God will help you to do so. So what I would like you to do, pick up this card, and um, after you're done filling it out, you can uh, uh, tear it up, and one part of it will stay for you, for your file, so that you can remember what you have promised to give for World Evangelism Fund. And the rest can be given to the ushers as they will prepare to uh, get, uh, receive them from you. While you are doing that, we would like to have an offering, a love offering for uh, a missionary here because he's never retired as a missionary. He will be going to the Fiji Island next, next, in a couple of weeks to continue to share and educate and prepare others to give the good news to the lost. So do your best, be generous, and give according to what God wants you to give so that this work can go on. Also, we want to thank all the volunteers who have helped to make sure the church has been clean, uh, the bulletin has been done. Thank you, Pastor. A one-man band, you did a great job. And uh, people have helped with the breakfast. Um, came early, get it all set up, and we have given, and we are giving church, and I have no doubt you're going to continue to give, for, not for us, but this work to go on. If, and if we don't go, we will be sending. But. So, ushers, if you would come, and we'll say a brief prayer, and then uh, begin to serve, and then we'll close with prayer. And, uh, but thank you so much uh, again, Pastor LeBron, for what you shared. And thank you for the way that you are going to sacrificially give uh, towards world evangelism. God is alive. We love you. Uh, we ask that once again, you would bless uh, the offering that we are about to receive, but also uh, bless the people who are planning to give towards your kingdom work around the world. Uh, may we understand what it means to do our part whether we go or whether we stay, we're making a difference in the world. We love yeah. you. Pray all this in Jesus' name. I sat on it, and you could not hurt it. We want to take pictures of children. I was told the children's director after service would take, would find a place over there. So if your children's lined up, your child is lined up, grandchild, take, let us take a picture. We'll send it, we'll have the pictures developed and sent back to you, and you can distribute them to the children and their parents, okay? They'll be outside. And, and, and. Will you stay with us once again? God who's live. Again, thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you have done, what you are going to do. As we go from this place, help us to remember that we go sent to go and accomplish your work in the world, uh, to be your hands, to be your feet. Uh, and so we give you our hands. We give you our feet. We give you our everything to be used as you desire. Uh, so send us out filled with your Holy Spirit, your grace, your peace, and remind us that we are loved, forgiven, and never alone. And we will be mindful to give you the thanks and praise that you are always worthy of. And now hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go with God's grace and his peace.